So I'm actually no longer working uh, for the Eagle Mine, unfortunately. As many of you know, um, that exploration program is no longer. Um, let me share a little larger here. However, um, I am an incoming uh, PhD student uh, this fall at Michigan Tech University in Houghton, Michigan. And um, the project I'd like to share with you today was done while I was working for Eagle um, with Lundin Mining Company and was um, developed in collaboration with some of my colleagues there. And so uh, this project uh, explores the use of magnetic susceptibility of contact metamorphosed sediments as a targeting tool for mineralized prototype channelists. Um, this is a case study from the Eagle and Eagle East systems. Um, so I hope you enjoy. So the big scope of this project, um, I was hoping Bob would lead me into this a little bit, but um, as many of you know, uh, exploration for magmatic conduit systems is extremely difficult because of their small spatial footprint, not only of the intrusions that host the mineralization, but also their associated metamorphic rocks, making direct targeting methods such as drilling and mapping and associated sampling and geochemistry extremely challenging and practical and often expensive. Um, so our objective with the study was to find an alternative method to distinguish metamorphosed sediments associated with the magmatic conduit. Um, our proposed solution to test the use of MAG-SUS as, as a means of identifying thermally metamorphosed sediments beyond their visible extent through data deconstruction and 3D modeling, sorry. And the implications of this are to provide a widely applicable practical, affordable exploration approach that could be used in conjunction with other methods. Um, and I can't see the bottom of my screen, but um, moving on. So here we are at the Eagle and Ely system, again, in placed into um, early Proterozoic uh, sediments uh, associated with mid-continent related rifting and magmatism. And so you can see there from the red circle, um, highlighted there in the center of the Barriga Basin, the Eagle and Eagle East purple dots there, um, and their spatial location. So the Barriga Basin sediments are more widely recognized, the Michigami Formation, and that's what the focus of the study is going to be. Um, so the general geology here, a long section looking north at the Eagle and Eagle East peritotype bodies. Um, these intrusions, um, here you can see the generalized stratigraphy of the Michigami Formation and the underlying basement rocks. The Michigami Formation is most widely broken into three different members, um, as Sandy kind of discussed these a bit, but um, here broken into the Fossum Creek, the Upper Greywacke and Lower Slate. Um, the Fossum Creek is a mix of turbidites and slates with variable amounts of pyrite and pyrotite. And for the focus of the study, we're just gonna leave this undivided. Um, the Upper Greywacke unit, uh, consists of dominantly turb turbidites, which has the least sulfides of any of the members, and the lower slate, which is sulfide rich in pyrotite and pyrite. Um, associated directly with the magmatic conduit, there's also this Hornfell species metamorphic halo, which has been touched on a bit here. Um, and so you can see that this is generally characterized by greenish gray beds due to the presence of fine grained chlorite. Um, and other generally iron bearing metamorphic minerals. So you can see there from the table on the right, um, some of the more pervasive uh, metamorphic minerals such as chlorite and cordierite. And these are pretty distinct um, photographs here, but uh, the pictures on the left are a, definitely a more typical flavor of, of the Hornfells. Um, other iron bearing minerals such as anchorite and calcopyrite. Um, and calcopyrite is generally associated with the massive sulfide cells. Um, again, as you can see from the photos on the left, uh, the Hornfell's characteristics are often visibly very subtle and uh, distinguishing features are, are not widely recognized. Um, further challenges associated with the Hornfelsing is that it's extremely localized. So you can see this cross section looking um, east at the Eagle East conduit and the drill hole traces intersecting the body there. Um, the prototype shell shown in purple the hosted mineralized semi-massive unit, as well as massive sulfide crossing all other units. Um, so you can see from this and the drill hole traces, the Hornfels is outlined there in the light green intervals. And typical ranges of Hornfelsing um, are anywhere from half a meter to 10 meters in distance from the ore body. <clears throat> as you can see from the photo underneath here and the location pointed out by the white arrow, um, that even when in close proximity to massive sulfide sills, like in the photograph here, almost immediately next to it, um, the metamorph metamorphic features are still extremely subtle. Um, and so this leads us back to our objective is 
how can we find these systems when their footprint is so small and their metamorphic halos are so limited? Okay, so what is MEGSUS and why do we want to use it? Um, well, MEGSUS is the extent to which a material becomes magnetized when exposed to an applied magnetic field. Um, and so this can be measured using a handheld kappa meter and um, it was done so at Eagle and collected every drill core run, which is approximately every three meters for surficial drilling, slightly less in underground, um, regardless resulting in this robust data set of over 100,000 data points at Eagle. Um, and as you can see from the graph below, looking at um, some typical MAGSUS ranges of different rocks and soils, you can see that there's a, a huge range of MAGSUS values that occur naturally in rocks and minerals, um, and that these are directly influenced by rock type and geochemistry, as well as P and T conditions. Um, so for just the scope of the study, I'm not gonna get into the weeds on um, kind of the physics behind MAGSUS and the different classifications that are kind of outlined as well in this uh, range plot. But what I just like to, to reiterate here and emphasize is that um, most of the, the rocks and the minerals that we're talking about here are not something that we traditionally associate as a magnetic, traditional magnetic material. Um, and I'd like to highlight here, um, outlined in the red there, um, the different ranges associated with sedimentary rocks, as well as their metamorphic equivalents. And so, if you look at this, you can see that this occurs over an extremely um, an extremely small range of values. And these differences are extremely subtle with a pretty big overlap. And this is the focus of the study was to really tease out these things and see if we can model them. Um, we can see here that um, by looking and plotting um, the different eagle rock types here, um, identified in the XY plot below against ferric iron, that you see there's a pretty strong direct correlation for all rock types at Eagle, suggesting that iron bearing minerals are the controlling factor in the signatures. And we can observe this downhole. So what you're looking at here is um, a downhole trace of Meg, Sus, and iron respectively with all other lithologies except for the sediments um, removed. And so you can see that spatially here downhole, there does seem to be a correlation between Meg Sus that agrees with the direct correlation plot that I just showed. And just a couple more downhole plots here. Um, you can look at um, the magnetic susceptibility in the same drill hole here and two different ways. You can see that because of the wide ranges of Meg Sus uh, values associated with different rock types, that when you look at all lithologies down hole um, with the intrusions, they're highlighted in blue and purple for the Berga-Gabbro dike and Eagle East Perditite, uh, respectively. You can see that um, because of the high uh, MEGSUS values associated with intrusions, it's very difficult to, to distinguish any sort of um, trends or anything associated with the hosting sediments. Um, but when we simply remove uh, those intrusive phases from the downhole plot, we can see that there seem to be clearly some um, downhole trends in Meg Sus that are influenced directly by their proximity to intrusive phases. And so moving forward with trying to model this, um, the Meg Sus of the sediments, we can see that these big data sets over these huge ranges uh, required a lot of iterations of deconstruction in order to distinguish trends um, and patterns and in the end model this desired attribute. Okay, and so we can further deconstruct this data according to member statistical distributions. Um, and so as you can see by looking at this long section of the eagle drill holes, um, all you're looking at here is the sediments again to kind of tease out the different patterns that we were seeing in the mag sus. Um, so each stratigraphic member here is observed to have a unique range of mag sus values. And these ranges um, have been previously used to model the contact surfaces between the members, dominantly done by Guillermo Beridi, um, while working at, at Eagle Mine. And so you can see here um, the surfaces that were modeled by him. And so we wanted to take this one step further and um, now use these distinct ranges associated with, with each member and actually um, look at their distributions to amplify anomalous ranges possibly related to metamorphism within each member. Um, and to do this, what we did is we looked at the dis different distributions of each member so you can see distribution here by the histogram of the lower slate mag sus sediments and um, 
we use the statistical mean of each member as an approximation for the background sedimentary mag sus value. And we implemented this as a limiting parameter, parameter in each of the three unique numeric models. And so um, this led us to our mag sus model. And so um, after we were done deconstructing all the different um, trends and patterns that were unrelated to the metamorphic halo, um, we were able to model it. So the technique that was used here is a, a 3D RBF, radial basis function numeric interpolation, which is kind of just a fancy term for uh, an exact interpolation method that kind of works like a three-dimensional Krieging technique. Um, so it takes um, all the different values within a particular bounding box according to whatever your input parameters are. Um, this was done in LeapFrog while at Eagle. Um, and so the model parameters that we put in, again, uh, lithological query. So we limited all the intrusions to really amplify um, those subtle trends. We use the MagSus mean for each stratigraphic member in order to um, isolate uh, anomalous values associated with each member, possibly related to metamorphism. Use an upper limit of 15 to remove any data entry errors, such as typos, like missing a decimal point or um, other logging related errors. Uh, and we set the interpolation within the boundary and to enhance high values. Um, and so before I show um, this kind of model extrapolated onto surfaces, because it's a little abstract, um, you can just imagine um, that these different isoshells, which uh, correspond to a given value, can be um, kind of intersected by a variety of planes. So um, what you're looking at here, the results, um, are the isocells shown here for each member um, extrapolated onto 2D vertical sections. And so what you can see here is uh, representative ranges associated with our scale bars associated with each Michigami member, again with the lower limit set to the statistical mean of each member's MAGSUS population. Um, you can see here that um, and observe that MAGSUS seems to consistently and gradually increase toward the prototype contacts, both at Eagle and Eagle East, um, and associated with massive sulfides, um, typically in the bases of both basal areas of both Eagle and Eagle East, and up into the Eagle East keel. You can see that the halo can be modeled um, up to 50 to 250 meters outside of both ore bodies and almost doubles in magnitude above the established background values. Um, these uh, halos appear to be most pronounced in the Fossum Creek and Upper Greywacke, and I've attributed this dominantly to um, more dominant turbidite beds versus slaty units, um, and also um, a lesser halo in the lower slate could be related to the higher overall mag sus values associated with just uh, sedimentary uh, pyrene pyrotite. And so the preliminary conclusions from this eagle system case study, um, the halos observed are inter interpreted to represent the approximate vertical extent of thermally contact metamorphous sediments surrounding eagle and eagle east uh, through data deconstruction and post deconstruction 3D modeling of sedimentary mag sus proved to be a reasonable approach to successfully spatially identify known metamorphic halos up to and beyond 10 times the logged visible extent at both Eagle and Eagle East. Um, again, the metamorphic halo extent here, typically ranging anywhere from half a meter to only 10 meters. Um, geochemical has been classified as undifferentiable because of its, um, the impractical, impractical nature of sampling invisible horn fells and mag sus halos or interpreted mag sus halos um, anywhere from 50 meters in Eagle East up to 250 meters at Eagle. Um, so magnetic geochemical expressions, uh, especially in close contact conduit are extremely complex. And so because of that work is ongoing to tease out data set correlations and component relationships, um, as well as alternate, uh, alternate interpolation methods and parameters are being considered to produce more sophisticated results. Um, the implications of this, uh, so this approach to data manipulation and modeling when used in conjunction with other methods could prove to be a powerful way of identifying anomalous conditions potentially associated with economic mineralization. Um, and by using case specific considerations on data visualization, this could be adapted to different systems and affordably integrated into both surficial and underground projects at any stage in exploration. 
I want to give a big thank you to Lundy Mining Company for allowing me to still use this data um, and uh, do this presentation today. So uh, if you have any questions, um, obviously you can ask them today or feel free to reach out to these contacts. Again, I'll be starting my PhD at Michigan Tech uh, just this fall. So thank you.